Today, we discuss unique couple and family portraits on Behind the Shot. Hi, welcome to Behind the Shot. I'm Steve Brazel, and this is the show where we try and get inside the mind of great photographers by taking a closer look behind one of their shots from conception to completion and all the stories and challenges that happen in between. And today I've got a great episode lined up for you. Before I get into it, there's just a couple of housekeeping things that I want to do. First of all, be aware this show is available to you in many different places, many different formats. Of course, the video is available on YouTube, the Behind the Shot channel there. But if you're a podcast listener that uses a podcast app, it's available in both audio and video in your podcast app, assuming that your podcast app supports video. So anywhere you get your podcasts, you can get behind the shot. Also, I want to remind you about our Flickr group. If you go over to Flickr, you join Flickr, can be the free account, and you find the behind the shot group on Flickr, join the group, submit some images. We're all having fun over there. And one of the unique things that I've started doing over there with my buddy Don Komarechka of the Photo Geek Weekly podcast is image critique shows. All you have to do is submit your image to the Behind the Shot group on Flickr, tag it with BTS Critique, and you're good to go. We pick a random selection of images each time, and we use those images in the photo critiques. The first one, by the way, is up right now on the YouTube channel. It's getting great feedback, and uh, we had a lot of fun doing it. We're going to record another one early December, I think around the 9th of December, and it'll come out that same week, uh, so watch for that. One other thing before I bring my guest in is Aaron Nace of Flurn was on. <clears throat> if you don't know Aaron, Aaron is one of the best online educators that there is. When this guy is on camera, it is really hard not to learn something. He's just, I'm, I'm not just saying that, he's really honestly that good. Well, the people at Flurn were kind enough to uh, give us a discount. Behind the Shot 20 will get you a 20% discount off a of Flurn subscription. So head on over there and learn some stuff. And that brings us up to our guest today. Now, today's guest is... Uh, one of those situations where I may not have ever found Twyla Jones on my own. And I'm really glad that I think it's Shira Maneri was the one who recommended. Shira is, is a watcher of the show and recommended Twyla Jones to me. And Twyla, it is so nice to meet you and welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. And it's really awesome to meet you. It's nice to meet you as well. You are Florida based, right? I am. Okay. So... As I was telling you kind of in the green room, I look through everybody's work, uh, look through their portfolio, try and get an idea, a sense of who they are. Really, most photographers know what their style is, but a lot of photographers have this common thread of a voice. And even though they know what their style is of shooting and post-production, they don't truly know their voice. And your voice is very clear when you look through your website. You take couples and family portraits to a level of using shading and lighting and motion in a lot of them that in a very crowded field, most family and, and couples portrait artists won't use motion, for example, like you do. How do you describe your work to people? Um, well, I know that I personally am just drawn to very emotive moments. Um, and cinematic moments. So I'm just kind of looking for that feeling when I'm photographing someone. Um, and so that's just like where it comes naturally to me um, to photograph through moment is when I can help. It helps me find more of those authentic feeling images because, you know, what I do isn't necessarily, I mean, it's not documentary because I'm usually heavily directing throughout my shoots. That but was going to be one of my questions actually too. Yeah, I wanted to feel like it was a real moment and not something that I've, I'm guiding or, you know, I don't want you to feel the camera's presence, really. I really want it to be about the connection between um, the two people in the photograph and not, See, you know, have so anything to do with me That's so fascinating to me because <laughs> the shot we're going to talk about today is one of those where when you look at this shot at first, it's fly on the wall, right? Yeah. It really feels like this was an organic moment that happened to be captured on film. And yeah. yet, you know, it wasn't right. There's there's areas of the scene that clearly show that it wasn't. But yet it gets that that emotion that you talked about um, as a photographer. 
you've taken that to the next level. You're an educator, you're a blogger. You also do mentoring, which I found really, really interesting. So I want to talk about the fact that you have two different websites. You have okay. uh, twilajones.com. That's basically your photography site, right? That's your portfolio? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Tell me about the other one, which is emotionalstorytelling.com. What is the point of emotionalstorytelling.com? Okay. Well, I, it was all, it, everything used to live on twilightjones.com and I just started out growing it. I was adding more and more tabs. So it was just so cluttered. Um, so I, I ended up moving all of the education stuff to um, emotional storytelling. And basically, I mean, emotional storytelling came about because I was asked to um, create a class for, have you heard of Click and Moms? I have. Yeah, they're a really great organization, and they asked me to put together a class. So this is the first thing I ever taught, really. Um, so I put that together, and that was the name we came up with for it, Emotional Storytelling. So I started a Facebook group, um, just kind of um, to assist with the class. So people that had taken the class, I could they could, they could get hands-on help, but ended up opening it to all photographers. And it's really just grown into a really beautiful community. Um, so that's so it's, what but we it, but call... it is more towards the education of photographers. Yeah, yeah, it's all education. So lots of online classes, and anytime I find something that serves my business in a really great way, whether it's like a template or presets or something, we make that available to um, other okay. photographers as well. All right. So now let's get into your workshops because part of your education thing is you also have two different workshops, or you're about to have two different workshops depending on what day this airs. You've got embracing the storm. Now, that's an mm -hmm. online editing workshop, and that's what you do yeah. basically as you go through, you, you have online classes on editing in, in what? Um, it, well, so it's primarily focused on Lightroom. Um, and it's, I mean, it's honestly everything that I wish I could have had all in one place when I first started. So it starts with the most important thing that a lot of photographers are not doing right, and that's backing up your files. Oh, thank you. So I'm a network engineer by trade and it's a big deal to me that <laughs> the number yeah. of times I see photographers say, oh, my, my drive crashed. Does anybody have, you know, a good drive recovery company? And it's like, yes, a drive recovery company is going to cost you a lot more than a good backup would have to start. I know. So, you know, we teach, you know, to have at least two good backups on you, but also backing up off site. Um, and anyway, so, I mean, starting from the very beginning and then file organization, because that gets to be such a disaster once you're really shooting and then you're needing to retrieve stuff or, you know, somebody needs their like wedding photos from last year and you have no idea where they are or maybe they're deleted. Well, you have no idea. And, and you're like me then, because again, and this comes from my network background, if you design something wrong and you grow into that it's really hard to fix later. Yes, and what I tell yes. everybody is set up your, I can't tell you how to set up your file structure. All yeah. I can tell you is don't set it up for input of your photos. Set your file structure up with the idea of how you are going to get those photos out, right? Yeah. That's it's mm -hmm. standard database design, really. It's how are yeah. you gonna retrieve that data, not how are you going to put that data in. And on the backup, let me just say, for those of you that are not doing a proper backup, the, vid the, the video people could see <laughs> yes. me do a slapping I motion. know, yeah. Look up a 321 mm -hmm. backup strategy. If you do a 321 exactly. backup and that's strategy, what we teach. Yeah. You, you're absolutely covered. You're a mentor. Yeah. And and I mentioned earlier, oh, actually, I don't want to do that yet. Navigating the Wild is your second workshop. And yeah. this one caught my eye because this is an online marketing workshop, but it's not live yet. Tell me about navigating uh, Navigate the Wild. So Navigate the Wild is marketing for photographers, um, and there we're covering um, a lot of stuff that photographers aren't doing right now. So, um, you know, and I just, I encounter a lot just through teaching other photographers at in-person workshops or mentoring. And a lot of people think that you can just, um, you know, throw something up on Instagram, throw it up on your Facebook page, and then maybe buy an ad every once in a while, but then they wonder why they're not reaching their ideal client. You're not reaching the people you really want to be working with that get it. And you're not able to charge the prices that you want to charge because you're, again, you're not working with people that get it, get you, you know? Um, so this is going to cover everything from, um, I think one of the most important things we teach is a mailing list, how to set up a mailing list and um, use newsletters so that 
your message is going to, and, and like you said earlier, like we own our list. Right. So Facebook and Instagram have algorithms. They decide who sees your content. Um, I mean, so you can have the best work in the whole world, but they're going to decide how many people get to and see And they can that. pull so, it away. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not so, saying they will. And, if, if Facebook works for somebody, hey, more power to you. But they can mm-hmm. change their algorithm at any time. Mm-hmm. So can YouTube, so can all, and you're right. You own your own list. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to reach everybody that has said, hi, I'm interested in you, I'm interested in you and I want to know what you have going on, then that's the best way to be sure that your message is going to When, reach when does this go live? Um, so um, it will be live December 9th, um, but it goes on sale on Black Friday. So we're running um, 25% off of everything. So all classes, in-person workshops and everything else on the website. So that's the time to buy it. Um, okay. And I think that we got to do something tech- then. I'm going to put, exactly. if you're doing 25% off your workshops and everything mm-hmm. else on your site, all of your training, your marketing, your, your yeah. new marketing workshop, Navigate the Wild. By the way, all of these, those two workshops, Embracing the Storm and Navigate the Wild, they're available at the emotionalstorytelling.com, which is the educational site for Twyla. But right. I want to make sure we get those out. So I'm going to put it up for the video people as a lower third under you. But if you would say what your Twyla Jones site is and the emotional storytelling site is. What? So <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. That's what I was going for. No. So what's, what's your main website for your portfolio? twilightjones.com and what's the other one emotionalstorytelling.com cha-ching we got it okay so i just wanted to get those out there for the for the audio audience and by the way her name is twylajones.com twylajones.com that's her portfolio there's a link there for education for photographers too yeah you'll make it to the other side yeah. if you just go to twylajones.com exactly and and by the way the yeah. blog post for this show will be available with all the links in it up at the normal website, BehindTheShot.tv, along with information about Twyla, a small gallery of her work that you can go look at. So go check that out. So, all right. So let's get into some questions for you, because again, what you shoot is is uh, something I don't shoot. And you shoot these types of shots in a way that I don't see a lot of family, couples. You also do weddings too, right? I have, yeah. I, I don't do as many anymore. It's just... I just had a baby and I have two other kids as well. Congratulations. So, you know, just thank you. Um, the time that they take away from my family weddings um, isn't, I'm like not in that season right now. But that's why education is working so well for me. And and online education. So, so I've got exactly. some basic questions before we bring the image up. Doing the type of photography that you do with family and couples, what what's the singular most important thing that you do when you prepare for a family on the back end, right? Your preparation, preparing for a family or a couple's shot or shoot. Um, It's absolutely, so there's two things. It's choosing a location and it's styling the session. So um, I have found I work best when I'm shooting somewhere where I feel really inspired. So I do, I control a lot about my sessions. I choose where I shoot. Um, and then I choose what they're going to wear. So I have a pretty large client closet at this point. Um, so I usually just have a meeting, um, online with my clients and that way, if they have anything picked out for the shoot, they can show it to me. And then I can go grab stuff from my closet and kind of show them and just sort of put things together in that way. Um, and then that way, when I show up, I'm absolutely inspired in every way from right. the way the clothing moves and what I'm seeing and where I am. Um, so a lot, I, I mean, that just takes so much out of, um, all like the hardship from out of a shoot, I think, cause I'm because then you can relax also is. at the shoot, but yeah. still, yeah. okay. But still, even though you've picked the location and done all that prep in advance, mm-hmm. there are still choices to be made the day of at location. So what what is your deciding factor when you get on a location and you're shooting humans, right? Uh-huh. What is your main deciding factor for lens choice? So I have been shooting with basically one lens for years now. Okay. What is it? <laughs> so that makes it really easy. Uh, the Sigma Art 35. Oh, their art lenses are so good. 
Yeah, but I just got the Nikon 58 millimeter lens. And so I don't think I'm going to take that one off now. I love it. I've been shooting with it for a couple of months now. So Interesting. Okay. And so yeah. you're a Nikon shooter. Okay, that, that's good yeah. to know. And then doing what you do, are there any apps that Twyla Jones can't live without on your phone or on your computer? Yeah. Um, what is it? It's called, um, that's funny. I, I can't live without it, but I can't think of it. It's called Golden Hour. And tides near me. So I live in Florida, so I shoot at the beach a lot. So it makes a difference if the tide is low or high. Um, And then golden hour tells me a lot. So I really like dramatic skies or skies with lots of clouds in them or just any kind of character. Um, So a lot of the clients that I shoot are coming from out of town. So they're here on vacation. So a lot of times I'll schedule their shoot for a day, in between these dates when they're here. And then as it gets closer, I can check the golden hour app and it tells me if I'm going to have clouds and what kind of clouds. So I can kind of choose and it rates the dates, like it rates sunset from one to 10. Oh, so I, like I can that. choose to shoot on my days that are tens instead of a one um, okay. to get a sky like that. Those yeah. are good. Those are good ones. All right. So some apps yeah. for people to pick up. Let's get into this photo here. This photo, okay. when I saw this, struck me in on many different levels. D- by the way, does this photo have a title or no? Oh, you should you should give it one. I should. I, I need to come up with one because <laughs> yeah. And, and for the people on an audio feed, let me go through my normal nightmare of trying to describe this photo to you in words, <laughs> which is it's just. I can't not, wait for this. Yeah, this is just not going to be easy. But here's what I got for you. <laughs> First of all, understand it's a black and white photo, right? And it's a very moody black and white photo. There's a lot of dark shadows and there's some really white whites and there's everything in between. In fact, this thing uses, I pulled it up and I checked. This thing uses the full spectrum of grays from zero to 255. And I absolutely dig that. It's an empty room, except there's a mattress in the middle of the floor on the floor. It's actually on the floor. I'm not talking a bed frame or anything. It's just a mattress with sheets on it. The sheets are messed up and spread across the floor. There's two pillows. And there's a guy laying on the left side of the bed face down looking. If, if this is a pose, this is perfect posing because I'd swear, I'd bet money he's actually asleep, right? And then to the right side, There is a young lady that is either taking a blouse or camisole type thing off, or theoretically it could be putting it on as though she's either getting out of bed or or getting into bed. And here's the killer part to me, is the window light that's on the wall. There's window light on the wall and it's at a 45 degree angle. And I'm gonna get back into that 45 degree angle when we talk about the composition of this shot as a whole, but it's just really, it's such a great mood. And it's what you described in your work that you want to convey energy, that you want to convey emotion and all of that type stuff. So let's start with the technical side. You're a Nikon shooter. Right. What body was this shot with? The Nikon D750, which is all I use. Okay. And th- would this have been the newer lens or was this the 35 millimeter one? This is the 35. Yeah. Okay. When you shoot a scene like this, do you tend to shoot in aperture priority manual? Actually, I can't remember what I was doing at the time of this shot. I, I took this one a couple of years ago, but I um, shoot in aperture priority with um, auto ISO, but with a minimum shutter speed. Oh, okay. And I use highlight weighted metering. So I basically have programmed the camera to know how I think when I'm looking at light. By using all the the manual and automatic tools together. All together, yeah. And I do that because, not necessarily for shoot like this, because that light stays pretty consistent. But when I'm shooting families on the beach, I go from direct light to backlight really fast and often. And that way the camera reads all that light for me. And all I ever want to do is expose for highlights since I want to keep those skies. They're usually brighter right. than everything else. So that's why I shoot that way. Nice. This was at one two fiftieth F one four. Wow. Uh, ISO 720, 35 millimeter. The F one four is just really fascinating to me. I know so many people that shoot an F one four lens wide open, like, like you did here. And to me, it scares the death out of me. I mean, the, the, <laughs> the, 
<laughs> plane of focus is so thin. And yet here, partially because you're at 35 millimeters, but partially because of the way you laid the plane out compared to the wall in the background, you managed to get everything in the right amount of focus. So right. the parts that are soft are soft in a, in a wonderful, natural kind of way. And this image, this image is kind of everything that I want in a picture. I made the comment, she could be taking the camisole off. She also could be putting it on. She could be leaving, she could be coming. This picture has a story that needs to be solved. Like for example, why is there the mattress on the floor, <laughs> right? I mean, there's <laughs> questions I have. Is he really asleep or is he burying his face in his arm because they just had a fight? There, yeah. There's so much here. So I guess the first question is, was this a client couple or was this something that you just did for you? This is actually a workshop. I am teaching for this session and oh. there are probably like 20 other photographers surrounding this scene on both sides of me. What, what was, okay, so as you structured this scene, Mm -hmm. Since you're teaching it, you had full control over what was here. Right. What was your intent in this story? T tell me about the, the the story of making this scene. Okay, I'm so excited. To, I'm so excited you chose this because it does have the best story. Okay, cool. So the night before, so I was in New York to teach this class. And the night before, um, we were staying at an Airbnb and my husband was with me and he goes to bed early and he isn't into like photography stuff or anything like that. So he goes to bed probably at, like seven o'clock. And so later I go upstairs and he is laid out on the bed exactly like that guy face down all sprawled out all over the bed. And I walk in and I very unsexily take my socks off at the foot of the bed. And then that right there, I was like, I'm doing this tomorrow. But in, you know. A so this way. wasn't even way planned in advance. This no, was no, inspiration before, yeah. of real life. So I'm always thinking and looking for moments like that. So a lot of the things that I direct my clients to do are just little moments that have happened throughout my day. Or sometimes it's a movie, like a scene in a movie that inspires me, you know, but I'm looking for little things like that, that kind of tell the story or like tell intimate stories between two people. So I feel like I don't want to take a photo of somebody like you know, grabbing somebody's butt or something right. or like full on making out because that I just don't think is like real true intimacy, especially, you know, when you've been married a long time, it's these little things, right? You know, I know exactly so, what you mean. It's, it also, it also, that doesn't leave, that doesn't leave the viewer with the ability exactly. to insert themselves in the scene, right? Yes. As soon as there's physical mm -hmm. contact, I can't be yeah. in that scene. When it's a scene yeah. like this, you can insert yourself into it to try and solve the puzzle of what this story is. Yeah. And, and you know, it's theater of the mind, really. Mm -hmm. Is that actual window light or is that softbox? Yeah, it's window light. Okay, because I, I just, I dig that. Is that the only light in this scene or was there artificial light added? No artificial light. So all the light. So it's a studio. Wow. It's Colony Studios in New York City okay. um, or like Brooklyn. Um, but the the windows are really high because the ceilings are super high in that place. There's like a loft you can go up to, but this is on the floor. So that is one of those really high windows being reflected onto I, I, that wall. There's so much I want to get into. I, I do want to touch on the composition because in this image, the shade, I mentioned earlier that this goes, because I pulled it into Photoshop to check it. This goes zero to 255 or like five to 255. I mean, it's full spectrum of grays in, in such a beautiful way. The shades of gray in this image, right? The full, I'm going to use the phrase color palette, even though it's a black and white, but, but the full mm -hmm. color palette of shades play into the story and the composition, right? It's not a vignette, but the edges are dark. Mm -hmm. But it's not. And that's that 35 lens. It just does that. You oh, know, that just, natural vignetting. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. I mean, people mm -hmm. really honestly go to behindtheshot.tv or go to twilightjones.com. But you won't know what shot it is if you just go to twilightjones.com. Right? <laughs> so go to behindtheshot.tv. Look up the blog post for this, the, the show notes for this episode. And take a look at this picture and you'll understand what I mean. Because everything works here. The, the exposure... And the fact that it's black and white, not color, right? The, the color removed 
removed the story down to shapes and it tells mood. It tells time with the fact that it's black and white in this moody. It even gives energy and looking at compositional stuff. The young lady is on the rule of thirds going from the bottom of the frame, the, the lower rule of thirds, all the way to the top rule of thirds on the right rule of thirds. The guy and the mattress are on the lower left rule of thirds. But here's the part that when I was really looking at this image and coming up with the questions I had on it and, and really looking at it, that struck me. The floor down below is actually balanced by the window light. And I mentioned earlier that that window light is at a 45 degree angle. Well, that 45 degree angle, if you follow it down, goes right through her shoulders and right down to him as though it were a golden ratio or golden triangle. It literally is a leading line within the shot, the angle of that light, taking me to her, who's closer to me, taking me to him, who's farther away from me. It's it's literally brilliant composition. Did you know? And it's okay if you didn't. Don't misunderstand me. It could just be something intrinsic in your mind because this is what you do for a living. Did you know that the angle of that light worked as a leading line when you it's were there? Absolutely, it's absolutely a feeling for me. Composition, absolutely a feeling. So it's not something that I'm going in and intentionally doing. But like you said, it's just, I mean, I think after a while, you just kind of see and know. And I think that a lot you see it, right? It's not just me, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I do, I do. And I love that that was like what got you with that one. It was, it, and okay. If you're not watching the video, it's not going to just make any sense now. But <laughs> as I, w whenever I prep for a show, I pull the image up and I kind of look at it and I come up with questions I have about it. And part of my selection when I work with my guests is I want to pick a shot they want to talk about, but I want to pick a shot. It doesn't do any good if I look at it and go, yeah, but I know exactly what you did, right? I want questions. Yeah. And I'm looking through and I'm formulating my questions and formulating my description for this. And I literally, while I was doing that, went, <gasps> The lights of 45, the lights are leading. I literally was doing this out loud <laughs> because that's, and, and it's so subconscious as you're looking at it because it's just up in the upper right. And yet subconsciously that is doing exactly what composition is supposed to do. It's leading my eye to the brightest spot in the image first, which mm -hmm. is the window, which sets the mood, the tone, the time, the energy, the day. I follow that down to her who's shaded. I follow that down to him who's asleep. I'm not sure what's happening in the, it just absolutely worked. Absolutely worked. Beautiful job on this. When you photograph a scene like this, what do you do from a sense of processing? So what would, uh, for this shot, you bring it up, you, you, you import it into your computer. What would your workflow be? Um, so I just, I mean, I, so I've made a lot of presets anyway. So, and I love black and white presets or black and white editing. Um, so a lot of times I'm just choosing, I've probably been using the same one for a few years that I created, but um, if I were to go through um, by hand and edit, so first I would convert it to black and white so that everything's grayscale. And then I go to the Okay, let, let me, it, I, I apologize. Let me interrupt you. First, you made it black and white. Mm -hmm. Why? For this shot, having not seen it in color myself, I, I can see, no, no, this needs to be black and white. But yeah. you brought it up in color. So what made you say in your head as an artist, this needs to be black and white? I mean, I just feel like if the color isn't doing anything to tell the story, then it's going to distract from the story, okay. really. And and that was the case here. Like, the, I mean, it's all, I mean, a lot of it was m pretty, like, mute colors anyway. What she's wearing is gray. The um, wall is gray. So only their skin tone was, like, basically the only color in the image. But it just, I just, anything that's, like, moving to me, I I just want it in black and white. That's I get it. how it. Totally Serves there with you. Best. So go ahead with yeah. your workflow thing. So you mm -hmm. would have imported it in. Okay. What would you have done? So I go to the tone curve, which I just think is like the powerhouse of Lightroom or any editing. Um, and that's where I build in all of my contrast. So I'm bringing down my shadows and blacks, and then I can bring up my highlights and whites. So that's where all of those, that the full range of 
grays that you're seeing, that's where it all comes from. Just going into the tone curve and carefully creating okay. a really pretty S curve. <laughs> Yeah, and that's I, I can see that now, right? This is this is your mm -hmm. traditional high contrast S yeah. curve. Why? <clears throat> and and this is just something that I'm thinking for those people that are new to Lightroom. Mm -hmm. You can kind of do an S curve with a combination of whites, blacks, and contrast sliders in the basic mm -hmm. panel. Yeah. Why do you feel that the curve tool is the way to go? Because you can add points on the curve so you can very carefully select. And if you're like picky about your black and whites like I am, you can very carefully select where which black, like the blackest blacks or mid-range blacks, like which of the blacks are going to get darker. Okay. So it's granularity then in, in doing it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So And then keep after going. that, after after that, I go back up to the basic panel in Lightroom, and then I'm going to bring – I kind of flatten out what I just – so I'm building contrast. So I put in all that contrast in the tone curve, and then I flatten out and add more detail by bringing up the blacks and shadows and bringing down the highlights and whites. And then I add a global contrast with the global contrast – or with the contrast slider. And then that's, it's usually pretty much where I want it at that point. If I need to tweak some more, I'll go to the HSL panel. And then, um, I don't know if everybody knows, but you can still tweak the colors with the HSL panel. So if I need the skin to be a bit brighter or darker, I can go into the oranges and reds there and tweak that. If I want my background colors to be darker, whatever those colors are, I can go in and bring the luminance. And of one of down. the things I love both about the curves and the HSL panel is you can use the targeted adjustment tool. So you yes, can click the yeah. little target, target mm -hmm. if, if like me, you're colorblind. But you know you want skin tones. You can move mm -hmm. that target over the area of the image you want brighter or darker, and make sure you're not in the saturation. Make sure you're on the luminance tab. But still, right. Uh, and then you can drag it as necessary. And for that matter, yeah, it works for with saturation as well. Yeah. You had this in mind. In your, <laughs> I'm going back now. In your <laughs> vision or in your real life, you were taking off socks. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> very unsexy. Like I was probably falling over, taking off my socks. As we all would. <laughs> yeah. Right. Clearly, she's not unsexily taking off socks. Right. Right. This yeah. is a provocative scene, but yet it's not because he's asleep. Mm -hmm. There's, there's again, there's just well, so and much. I, I know. And there are a lot of ways I could have gone with it. He could have been yes. propped up on his shoulder watching her, you know, right. but this was true for me. I mean, except no, but that's that actually part. interesting in that that's actually a killer lesson in and of itself is that also would have worked, right? Yeah. This could have been romance. He could yes. have been propped up, you know, with a, a magazine centerfold pose waiting for her. Yeah. He also could have had, uh, he could have been sitting on the bed with his elbows on his knees and his hands up to his head, like, please don't go, which would have clearly yeah. told the anger story or fight story. Right. Or yeah. it's this is life and there's <laughs> yeah. parts that are sexy about life and there's parts that are just life about life. Yes. That brings in the question though, all those options were available. Yeah. What made you, obviously he was modeled after your husband. Uh huh. For lack of a better phrase. <laughs> what made you choose her pose though? Cause you could have gone down 15 Sucks. different roads here, but you chose that. <laughs> yeah. I just, that's a good question, I guess. I just love the idea of that. I just love the idea of her being so beautiful and doing this very sexy kind of, but natural thing and nobody seeing it, you know? Oh, oh, yeah, that's okay. That's see, <laughs> and that's something that I didn't see that this beauty is happening here and it's your yeah. dude, you're missing it. Wake up. Yeah, right. right? <laughs> It's like, come on, man. Uh, you know, okay, just I get got it. Very complicated. <laughs> but but isn't that true though? Is with yeah. this one, and that's part of the reason a that I love that it's black and white, and it's also part of the reason that b I love that there's nothing else in the scene because just doing the mattress on the floor, the color strips the story down to the shapes of what's happening. Yeah. The mattress being the only thing in the room strips the story down to the bare 
single sentence description. And yeah, just brilliant. So you walk into a scene with a couple or uh -huh. with a family because mm -hmm. this is a couple's one, but you do family too. You have some yeah. wonderful beat shots where you have motion in them and blur and and most people in, in your field, oh, I can't show the mom and the child blurry. Yes, you can. That's energy. It's motion, right? Yeah. Um, What is your most most important tip for uh, working with families or couples from a posing point of view? Um, I, to keep them engaged. Um, and I'm always looking for hands to tell the story. So Ex I feel explain like- Explain that to me. What do you mean by looking for hands? I feel like that can make or break a shot. So if you've got a hand that's not quite connected, so I hate, I mean, I really hate like flailing hands. Where or like just the showing the back not of like a hand. Quite yeah. complete or something. Yeah, yeah. Or like this. Or this one where you, knuckles. if you're not watching a video, yes. you can't see it. But where you see the hand, but there's what happened to their fingers, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I just, you know, and I, I think that it can do so much to really connect an image as well. So um, I'm getting in really close often and, um, you know, bringing forehead to forehead, building the frame with just faces. And I'm always challenging myself to see how I can connect an image even more, even more. And so usually that's bringing hands up into the frame um, to tell more of the story. Um, and then I'm looking at eyes too. So I love to do like closed eyes or just have people looking in different directions. So, um, I've had wedding photographers tell me something before, and I'm curious because while it's not weddings, it's almost, it's weird to say weddings really aren't an intimate experience other than the kiss, right? It's this giant group of people. Yes. Yeah. Shooting what you shoot with family and, and couples. I wonder how this statement of, of wedding portraits translates. And that was, you generally don't want to show their foreheads actually touching, or at least not the, in a kiss, the perfect shot is before the lips touch with a little mm -hmm. space in between them. Is that mm -hmm. the same with what you shoot? I feel that way too. Yeah. Um, a lot of times it's like the moment right before, or if I have a couple together, I'll have them like bringing their faces as if they're about to kiss and I'll have them move their faces back and forth, but it's not like the moment of the kiss. Cause you want that like a little bit of anticipation in your okay. image, I think, you know? Yeah. yeah. Cause oh, that's I know exactly. what like leaves the story, right? Yeah, exactly. It's this, it's yeah. the exact same as this image. And that is you're leaving it's something like the for- The kiss is the conclusion. So why- there's no story yeah. there. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, again, your work is just awesome. And Thank you. in a field where there's a lot of people that are making their customers extremely, extremely happy, mm -hmm. you're above that creating an art out of it. Uh, <laughs> and I, I kind of dig where you've gone with that. Leaving the picture for a minute. Mm -hmm. You shooting couples and families. And you shoot, a lot of your shots are on the beach. Yeah. A lot of your shots are on a set. Do you have a preference when you get a client you've never worked with before and you are trying to choose that scene? Because you said one of your most important preparation tools is choosing the location. Yeah. Explain, because this is an area a lot of people struggle with. I struggle with uh -huh. it if I'm doing band portraits or something. It's like yeah. every stair looks the same and every sidewalk <laughs> looks the same. And yeah, what what can people do to be able to pick better? I don't want to say better locations. That's not the word I'm looking for. What can people do to better pick locations? So I am looking for locations with diversity. So the beach, I, I really, if I can, I make everyone come to this. I live in Fort Pierce, Florida. It's a small town in Florida, but if I can get people to drive two more hours to get here, it's better than me going to like West Palm and shooting at a beach there because this beach that I love so much, first, it's not as crowded, which is important for anybody that you're photographing because they're, you know, usually self-conscious. And so to have an audience and also the way that I have them dressing, usually like you just stick out. Everybody else is in swimsuits and I've got, you know, like right. women in these beautiful flowing gowns. <laughs> um so their comfort is really important. And then and actually also that's the a good point. I, a lot of your beach yeah. shots, the mm -hmm. women I just made that I just realized that they're wearing very loose, 
almost like beach dresses, but even looser than beach dresses, which gives flow of fabric in the picture too. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and, and because it's Florida, if I, and I have friends that shoot like on trails and, um, in like, it looks like the jungle and they're beautiful, but I just don't go there because the bugs are so bad. It's hot. So even if it's hot on the beach, at least we have the water there. At least we have like the wind. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, so that helps out a lot. That makes, that makes um, sense. So if there was one photographer that people don't know that people should follow other than yourself, uh -huh. who's a uh -huh. photographer that you would recommend that people follow? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I, if you have one, and if you don't, that's fine. I surprise I mean, everybody with this one question. One came to mind immediately, so I think that he's who I should say. Um, his name's Rafael Bohar. He's based in Poland, um, and he actually photographed my husband and I's elopement in Portugal. He's an incredible talent. Rafael Bohar? Uh-huh. B-O-J-A-R. Oh, Bohar. Okay. Name. Yeah. Uh, all right. So everybody got to look up Rafael Bohar. Just so that you know, for those of you watching, the image that we discussed today, which if you didn't go look at it and you're driving in the car listening to this, A, drive safe, please. Uh, B, <laughs> go to BehindTheShot.tv and look at it because on the blog post and show notes for the show will also be some information I wrote about Twyla and there's a small gallery to give you a taste of what she does. If you're in the Florida area, you can always hire her to do a, a couple or family portrait there. And all the websites are there. The websites, if you're watching video, have been coming up underneath, but I do want to say them again. So what's your normal portfolio site? Twylajones.com. Okay. And your educational site, which is really education for photographers. Yeah. Um, Emotionalstorytelling.com. And I've got links for these on the blog post too, but just real quick, give out your, your workshop stuff. Oh, um, embracing the storm is the editing course. So again, everything from backups to organization to editing and, um, a wide variety of editing programs that I like to use. And then, um, navigate the wild is marketing for photographers. So everything from email list to Pinterest to, Facebook, Instagram, all of that. And that launches on December 9th. December 9th of 2019. If you're watching this after yes. that, it's live. Uh, if you watch this before December 19th, starting on Black Friday, you're doing a sale. Is there mm -hmm. is there a code? What do they need to do for the sale starting on Black Friday? Everything will just be 25% off. Everything. Yeah, everything I have. Classes. What about mentoring? Yeah, mentoring, um, in-person workshops, everything. Everything. Wow, that's a pretty good yeah. deal. Twyla, thank you so much for doing this. And thank do me you. a favor, uh, tell Noella, who's been helping us get this set up, thank you for me too. She's amazing. I She's will. absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, you've got a, you've got some great help there. Uh, but thank yeah. you so much for coming on and doing this. I really appreciate yeah, thank it. thank you. So yeah. Twyla Jones, uh, I've been putting up the websites the entire show on the video, if you're watching on YouTube or whatever. Make sure that you go check out Twyla's site, check out her workshops, Black Friday, 25% off everything. Okay. Yeah. And the new workshop uh, lands on December 9th and you can pre-sign up for that as well. Again, I'm Steve Brazel. I wanna remind you about a couple of things. First of all, again, the Flurn discount. If you're interested in education from Flurn and Aaron Nace, not a sponsor. I do this every show because I just really appreciate that they gave you guys a code. Flurn doesn't pay me, not a sponsor. I just like their stuff. Behind the Shot 20 will give you a 20% discount on a Flurn subscription. Also, Flickr. Go to Flickr, sign up for a pro account, or sign up for the free account. Join the Behind the Shot group there and submit some images and join the community and have some fun. That's where we're, we're having a lot of fun. And it's where Don Komorechka and I are choosing the images for our new critique shows. Critique number one is up on YouTube right now. That's only going on YouTube just because it's so video-centric. Uh, but you can go submit your images there. If you want them to have the opportunity of being critiqued, can't guarantee it, but if you want it in the pool of images that we choose, uh, tag your image with the Flickr tag. You don't have to do hashtag. Don't put it in the comment, do it in the Flickr tag. Uh, BTS critique, and that'll get you set up for that. Again, I gotta thank my guest today, uh, Twyla Jones, Twyla Jones Photography. You can go to twylajones.com, go to emotionalstorytelling.com as well. Check out all of her stuff. If you ever wanna reach out to me, 
If you watch the video, my lower thirds do come up on the video as well. There's way too many of them. Uh, so if you're not watching the video, you're not missing anything. Let me just tell you this. You can find me at Steve Brazel on either Instagram or Twitter. It's two L's, like the country Brazil, but two L's, Steve Brazel. My website is stevebrazel.com. And of course, you know the website for the podcast. It's behindtheshot.tv. That does it for another episode. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you on the next show. Thank <laughs> you.